year's debate topic is all about international arms sales. And I want to break that down real quick. So how many of y'all know what the word arms means in that context? Sure, in the hat. Weapons, so what kind of weapons? Is it just guns? Yep. And it can them hurt. Essentially, yeah. So arms sales talks about both like normal guns as well as planes, tanks, and all sorts of military-related vehicles. So it's not just about the weapons that you could potentially buy at Walmart. The other thing is that this is an international topic. So this year we are not going to be talking about the Second Amendment, although that's something that, come, that comes up on the first day a lot. We're just going to be talking about other countries that buy weapons from us. So do any of y'all have any idea what kinds of countries buy weapons from the United States? Yep. Uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, UAE, um, Turkey, uh, Greece, all of NATO, yep. um, United Kingdom, Mexico, yeah. Canada. So that's a good list. Um, so one of the main things that one of the main clients of weapons in the U.S. is Saudi Arabia. And so, how many of y'all heard about uh, what happened with Jamal Khashoggi a little while ago? Yeah, Ingrid. So he was a journalist who I think he worked for the Washington Post, and he asked uh, about about Saudi Arabia, and he was going to get married, and then he had to do some Right. So the important thing to keep in mind with some of the clients of American weapons is that even though the U.S. is providing them arms that they maintain their state's authority with, they are not necessarily defending the same values and rights that all Americans have. Uh, in this case, uh, Saudi Arabia would have infringed on Khashoggi's freedom of speech and freedom of the press. So we'll be talking about the implications of that a little bit. So that's what the international means. The U.S. sells arms to a bunch of different countries. It sells arms to people like Saudi Arabia, but it also sells arms to some of our key allies. So countries like South Korea and Taiwan uh, are basically maintained off of the uh, weapons that they can buy from the United States. So that's something to keep in mind with the fact that this topic is international in scope. The other thing that I want to talk about is sales. Because this topic is only dealing with weapons that are sent to another country uh, and are bought. So who do you think is doing the selling of these weapons? Yeah. The U.S. Yeah, so the U.S., but who in the U.S.? Is it the government? Is it, like, different companies? Yep. Uh, private companies. Yeah, so arms sales are a process that both the United States government and private countries can engage in. So the U.S. has some regulations of what uh, private companies can do with those weapons, and the United States military can also engage in sales as well. So this year's topic deals with producing both of those. So we're trying to lower both the amount of weapons that, uh, that different American com uh, companies can sell, as well as the weapons that the United States military can sell. Awesome. So now I want to jump into some of the pros and cons about this. So if we are saying that the United States must reduce the amount of weapons that it's selling to other countries, what are some of the pros that we can see coming of this? Yeah, Ella. Well, if we're reducing the sales, are we getting more money? Yeah. Reducing. Yeah. If we're reducing the sales, then we can Yeah, so if we reduce the amount of weapons that are going out into the world, then there's a pretty good chance that there are fewer people that are going to be using them. So one of the ways it could reduce violence is just by preventing these regimes from getting these weapons in the first place. Another way it could reduce violence is if we say to those countries, well, we'll sell you these weapons, but we'll only sell them to you if you meet certain standards, that could be another way that it could reduce violence, because that way those countries can no longer use those weapons for some of the purposes they had originally been using them for. The U.S. already does some of this, but none of those regulations have stopped the U.S. from selling a lot of weapons to Saudi Arabia. And there's a lot of problems that we can talk about there, uh, that Saudi Arabia is engaging in bad activities with U.S. weapons. Uh, what are the other upsides of limiting the amount of weapons the U.S. can sell? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that deals a lot with what we just talked about with stability. So if there are less weapons going out in the world, there's less violence, and there's also less human rights violations. Because it's not just the amount of violence that these countries can inflict on people, it's also what they can do with the weapons without pulling the trigger. So if these countries are supplied by a ton of weapons and they have a strong military government, uh, they might not have the same freedom of speech and freedom of the press. So even if they aren't actively oppressing their people violently, 
they still are able to maintain a level of power that they wouldn't be able to otherwise maintain. So those are some of the key things that we can think about uh, with the pro side of reducing arm cells. Yeah. What about it? So they could use it for terrorism sometimes. All right, so with arm sales, one of the things to keep in mind is that a lot of the times when the US sells weapons, these weapons might not end up in the same place that we thought that they would go to. So although the US does regulate the fact that these countries can't sell the weapons once they've already bought them from the US, there is nothing stopping bad actors like terrorists from taking those weapons if they beat the opponent's military in combat. So one of the things to keep in mind, here's a good example of that. So in the 1980s, uh, there was a, uh, the Soviet Union decided to invade Afghanistan. And when they did that, the United States decided to support some of the factions that were resisting the Soviet invasion, called the Mahajadeen. And when the US supplied the Mahajadeen with weapons and some training, uh, they used it to fight against the Soviet Union then. But one of the people involved with the Mahajadeen, you might know him, his name was Osama bin Laden. So the US, by supporting an anti-Soviet force, actually, at the end of the day, hurt itself because we all know that Osama bin Laden used some of those tactics eventually against the US. So that could be another pro of reducing foreign military sales bars. Awesome. Yeah. Yemen also, um, it could help de-escalate the situation of Iran because we're currently signing with Saudi Arabia in a cold war. So if we stop signing with Saudi Arabia through selling the weapons in a cold war, then we can get some leverage in negotiating for Iran. Yeah, so that's another really, really smart point to make, is that the U.S., even though we're selling weapons to some countries and they might like us for it, other countries probably aren't too happy that we're selling weapons to their enemies. So if the U.S. stops selling weapons to some countries, then it could improve its relations with others. So now we're gonna to get to the cons of reducing arms sales. So what are some problems with the, with, that could happen if the United States decided to sell fewer weapons? Uh, let's see, who haven't I called on? Uh, yeah, in the back. The US's military won't be as strong. You can make that argument. If the US stops selling as many weapons, then maybe our military won't have as many resources because it's not getting as much money. Okay, I can see that. Uh, yeah. The economy could drop. Could you say a bit more about that? How would that happen? Yeah, so that's a really good point. So the arms manufacturing sector of the economy it employs a ton of people. So if the United States decided to sell fewer weapons to other countries, then A, those companies are making less money, and B, they're probably going to employ fewer people. And if that's happening, then those people have less money to spend in the economy, and those companies have less reason to buy products from other companies to turn into weapons. So there would be a pretty big economic impact as a result of that. Another thing to keep in mind is some people think that the United States military always has to be on guard. So if the United States military no longer has strong defense contractors to buy weapons from because they're making less money and there's less reason for them to produce weapons, then some people might argue that the US would no longer be militarily prepared to fight other countries, which would act as a deterrent. Because if the United States is military, militarily prepared, then are you gonna want to attack the US? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. What's another con? Yeah, in the, in the sweatshirt. Yeah, so if you don't sell the weapons, then you could lose allies, exactly. So a lot of, al of allies of the United States might be in a relationship with us because they think that, oh, the United States will provide us with some weapons. That's cool. If the US stops living up to that end of the bargain, then our relations with those countries could go down, exactly. Uh, yeah. Could you say that a bit louder? Yeah, so that's another good point. So the US, so on both sides of the issue, the US could damage its relations with other countries. If the US stops selling weapons, then it could improve relations with the countries that don't want us to sell the weapons. If it continues to sell weapons, then it can improve the relations with the people who want to buy our weapons. 
and the opposite is true if it does the opposite in that case. So if the United States decides to stop selling weapons, then the people buying from us probably aren't going to be too happy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Russia could start being um, aggressive on the Ukrainian border since Ukraine is considered a high-risk country. Would also could be the start of World War III, and uh, the United in the United States have been generally backing Ukrainians, and Russia has been extremely aggressive against Ukraine, which is too part of the territory. So um, the Russia could easily start being more aggressive than they already are um, with the Ukrainian border and its more of Ukraine. Yeah, and Ukraine would be less prepared to defend itself. So if the United States stops selling arms, and people like Ukraine would might not have enough weapons to continue to oppose Russia. And if Russia saw the U.S. stop selling weapons, then they might think that, oh, the United States isn't as militarily prepared. The last con that I want to get to real quick is that other countries also sell weapons. Russia and China are big producers of arms, and they are involved in the market just as much as the U.S. is. So if the U.S. decides that it's going to regulate its sales of weapons to other countries, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, linger. Yeah, so if the United States stops selling weapons itself, then other countries could just fill in the market gap. And if that happens, then other countries would still have the same weapons and they could continue the human rights violations or the violence that they're already doing. So even though the US might try to increase regulations, other countries could uh, decide to sell uh, weapons to those countries anyway. The one thing that I would wanna keep in mind with that though is that some people think that American weapons are of such a higher quality and these countries are so dependent on the U.S. military at this point that even if the U.S. stopped selling weapons, they would probably uh, want to do whatever the U.S. is saying and not buy from other countries because of how dependent they are and how much of a higher quality U.S. weapons are. Awesome. So that's a topic 101. Do any of y'all have any like big picture questions or questions about anything that we covered today? Yeah. Um, does, the, does the stop selling weapons side um, include stop selling weapons? like Taiwan and uh, South Korea and Japan to increase escalation with China, or is it believe that since those countries are high risk, you can still sell weapons? So the plan on the packet for uh, this camp, so stop selling weapons to countries that are actively involved in conflict and to ones that are deemed highest risk. So you can make the argument that South Korea is actively involved in conflict and that Israel is actively involved in conflict. But uh, the way you want to think about it is that mostly we are targeting the reduction of arms sales to countries that actively violate human rights. So although on the resolution we can re reduce arms sales to all those countries, the specific plan that we're going to be talking about at this camp does not do so. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Anything else? Cool. Chris, I think